the league has always done a very good job historically of making sure that high profile players either stood on the sidelines of labor fights or worst yet crossing the line um, and opposing their union. You end up uh, being one of three in terms of final candidates for the NFLPA uh, executive director job. It, it, it was you, Troy Vincent, Trace Armstrong, the, the latter two of which being former players and former uh, union presidents. So you, you know, as you said, were kind of the outsider in the process and then defy all odds and end up being uh, elected. I believe like 77 of your first 100 days on the job you were traveling. What was that like? <laughs> um, painful? <laughs> painful. Uh, but painful from a, just a grueling standpoint. I mean, that's a very tough travel schedule. Um, it was important for us to try to uh, get to all 32 teams because one of the things that, that became clear to us was that our membership um, can be incredibly... Uh, resilient and strong if they are empowered. Um, and they can only be empowered if they understand. And the one thing that our guys excel at is the ability to understand, to understand then what the plan is and to execute the plan. And did you feel that was lacking prior to uh, you coming on board? You know, not so much, uh, uh, you know, not so much a problem as, um, you know, the way the, the, the Players Association was before I got here and the way it was now that, that I was here. The, the premium on, on education and empowerment was that in a relatively short amount of time, the owners are going to opt out of this agreement. And we had every belief that ultimately they were going to lock the players out. So the only way to, to put, be in a position to react to that was to make sure that on a very short amount of time, we educate and, and empower our players to understand what's coming and the necessity for them to prepare. So, uh, you know, look, you don't have to look far in our history uh, to understand what our challenges are uh, as an organization. Um, the league has always done a very good job historically of focusing on high profile players, uh, making them feel like they are above the collective group of players, um, making them feel that they uh, are entities uh, uh, unto themselves, that uh, when uh, times of labor strife would appear, they, are, they have done a very good job historically of making sure that high profile players either stood on the sidelines of labor fights or worst yet, as we know from, from history, crossing the line um, and opposing their union. Um, there wasn't a doubt in my mind that at some point the National Football League would, would make the exact same attempts uh, in our scenario. So the only thing you really have at that moment is the speed with which um, you can actually go out and reach and touch and excite your base and excite your players about the challenges that are coming. And for guys like Tom Brady and Peyton Manning and Drew Brees and Ray Lewis and, and um, guys who are household uh, superstar names, uh, to impress upon them very quickly that this is a fight for all of us. And, and we're going to need them as much as we're going to need anybody else uh, as a member of this team. What was the learning curve like for you? Everest. As far as where we needed to be on the learning curve, I believe that on the day uh, that I was elected, um, we were 90% of the way there in understanding what we needed to know in order to prepare our players. So, for example, um, you know, before even the election, during the process of, of talking to the executive committee as a, as a candidate, um, I didn't really talk to our players as you should elect me because of X, Y, and Z. Um, we had almost four or five hour conversations about this is the National Football League as it exists as a 501c6 nonprofit. 
this is these are the TV contracts that they have and this is what they've done in order to increase their leverage against you. So the thing, whether you elect me or not, um, it seems to me that as you formulate where you are and where you need to be, here is a course or, or here is a, a, a process that you need to engage in. And if you haven't engaged into that process up until this point, you're behind. My conversation with guys like Jason Witten or DeMarcus Ware or, or um, Ryan Clark or Charlie Batch, those discussions were about, look, how do you see the world um, and, and how do you see yourself as dealing with the fight that you know is coming? Um, that was what the process was like for me. And, and to me, the, the beauty of it and the excitement of it is, you know, that picture on the wall was, was taken on the day that I got elected. Really, that day was the day that um, I realized that we had a group of leaders um, who were going to commit themselves uh, to take a stand. And, and that, uh, I think anybody in business will tell you, is 95% um, of the issue. How, how would you explain your mindset of just trying to continuously improve as a person or in your profession? You know, and that, I mean, I'm going to have to go back to, to my family. You know, my, you know, my grandfather uh, had, had 14 kids. He was a pastor, um, continued to put food on their table while he was sharecropping in Southern Virginia. Um, my dad got drafted into the Marine Corps before he could finish high school. Um, my mother was abandoned by uh, her parents and she raised herself from the time that she was um, 14 years old um, after surviving being burned over 70% of her body. I come from a tremendously tough uh, group of people. Um, what they have always shown throughout their lives is a, um, a will um, and, and sort of a loving discipline uh, about how to conduct themselves and, and how to take care of the people both in their family and in their extended family. And, and what we try to do here um, is to engage in sort of a loving discipline about how we take care of ourselves and, and our extended family of players and their extended family.